Recording to the in progress. To the session of the, the questions. Now we are going to, to allow the, the recording and then we are going to share the, the video. Can you see the video on the screen? Perfect. Hi all. In today's session, I will talk about the analysis on early droughts in genuine carbon's paper written by me in collaboration with Thomas Lubertino, Jorge Anka, Karen Roberts, and Arna Marlena. For this work, we took as main focus the careers of computer engineering and bachelor of system analysis that are taught at the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Buenos Aires, which historically registered high levels of student dropouts that caused low graduation rates and an increase in the average time to degree. First of all, I'm going to give some context about this and then we'll go in depth with the analysis. Um, some people explain this phenomena based on two sociological uh, theories. The first one is the student integration model, where the integration of the students into the academic world directly affects the determination, determination of whether or not to drop out of school. And the other one, the student, student attrition model, that gives relevance to factors external to the educational institution. The relevance given to the variables that try to explain the phenomena, whether family, individual, or institutional, addresses different dimensions of analysis, including psychological dimensions, economic ones, sociological ones, between others. As seen on these two plots, it's evident to note how the total number of students uh, in the program as well as the number of graduates decreased over the years, where in addition, the percentage of the latter was always very low in relation of the total. In this context, we try to obtain behavior patterns of the MyRipple.R platform database through the use of information exploitation processes. This platform is the one the computer department students use to submit the different assignments they are given. Now we will talk about the analysis itself. Um, first of all, an automatic data analysis was carried out from the database of this platform using Python, Jupyter Notebooks, and the Pandas profiling library. Also, we ran a linter to obtain a score for each of the student submissions, but this option was finally discarded because the activity submissions table from the platform contains a status of the submissions, such as failure, uh, build error, success, right error, or within others, uh, according to the teacher's criteria and not the linter's criteria. That finally will define if the student passed or not the, the task or the assignment. After that, um, a data set was built from the information obtained that contains data about the student, semester of the subject, uh, code of the subject, and all the deliveries for the different tasks with their respective status. With the first exploratory data analysis carried out, it was found that the data belong not only to this, those careers we were, we want to focus on, 
but also to 10 different careers. Um, and to complement this analysis made with Pandas profiling, we run the detailed library to analyze the predictive power of each of the variables and see which models the library recommended. To this analysis, the application of several clustering algorithms were added to find a common pattern among the data that could mark a tendency to leave one of several subjects. We ran five different models using PyCarat library, uh, as you know, by on the slide. Uh, the model that had the best performance was the spectral clustering one with a much higher CLOT score than the others, resulting in the clustering we can see on the plot in the slide, uh, using four clusters. Uh, we can see also in the album one that ideal number of clusters is three, but we needed something uh, more granular for this. But also by analyzing the groups that uh, were formed from this uh, algorithm, we did not notice any pattern that shows the selection by students. So also this um, analysis was discarded. After this stage, an anomaly, anomaly detection model was applied to emulate the dropout variable that could not be obtained. To address this issue, we use the PyCarat model for anomaly detection. Three different types of models were tested. Um, the last, this last model was the only one that agglomerated a group of students in almost a single point in space in relation to the dimensional detection variables used by PyCarat. As can be seen in both plots, the anomaly points are clustered in a single region, both in the three-dimensional ones and the two-dimensional one. Once the synthetic uh, predictor variables was created, two classification models were applied to the resulting data set, each one from a different library. The first one was the PyCard classifier, where random forest was the most performant model. Similarly, the confusion matrix shows the results for this unbalanced, unbalanced data set with only one false positive. So we can see the, the model run just uh, fine. On the other hand, it can be seen that a failure variable is extremely important for this prediction, having an importance rate uh, almost nine times of the following one that is the build error one. And the other model we used was generated with Tipot library and produced a pipeline that includes logic, logistic regression and like by carrot a random forest. Uh, the metric C in, in the figure show excellent results just like the first model. So to conclude, the process carried out shows how data science helps to answer the research question that is if it is possible to detect student dropout, which implies low graduation rates. Here, hints have been found about the existence of indicators such as failure characteristic, which represents the number of times that the student fails in the segment and will represent a good predictor in this first instance of the going investigation, allowing teachers to take actions in the early stages to avoid uh, student dropout. As next steps to obtain a model that reflects the reality of the students, the following data sets should be included. Uh, first of all, the data from the Sugarani, that is the platform where students have all he, their um, academic history. Uh, also, the data of all the careers of the university, not only focusing on the the pattern of uh, 
computing department um, careers. Um, finally, we want to acquire some student satisfaction statistics to address the problem we mentioned at the first part of this presentation that this um, problematic is not only institutional and can have a more background uh, in each one of the students. So that was uh, all we have to present. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. And now Ignacio Manes is present uh, to, to answer. Has anybody any question? I have one question, Ignacio. Uh, what's the, 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 what, what are you doing with your future lines? Because I, I saw you are going to, to take the, the data from the Siouanani. The, the Siouanani is a software in Argentina that uh, manage all the, 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 the information in the universities. And uh, what did you do with this, or, or is an expectation? Hi. Um, the idea is to add this data to our models and to retrain them. Uh, as for now, we don't have access to that data. We are still uh, having thoughts with the university, to, with the uh, University of Buenos Aires, in, uh, in our, our uh, faculty. And once we have that data, uh, the idea is to rerun these models, as it said, retrain them, and to analyze uh, the output of this, and if we had to rebuild these models or not. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, you, are, you are going to take the information of other careers too? Yeah, that's the idea. That's the main idea. To extend this, uh, this analysis not only to uh, software engineering careers, but, but all the business and business engineering and the other careers from our engineering faculty. Well. Thank you so much. Has anybody any question? I'm going to see the chat. Hi. Uh, here, and somebody here uh, wants to, to ask something. Wait a sec. Perhaps I missed something early in the presentation, but with your work, do you think that you can predict before somebody even starts the likelihood that that particular student isn't going to make it in engineering? Uh, as for now, we cannot. Um, the idea is to add this data to the, to the model to improve this prediction we are working on. Um, also, the main source of data will be the, the, the scores of the, of the students. So, the, the response for that is uh, no. Uh, we will have to wait until the, the student fails or start failing in the career so as to to have that uh, data uh, to make that prediction. Well, thank you so much for your answer. And thank you so much for your presentation. Well, now we're going to the, with the second paper. Uh, the, the title is uh, Depression Diagnosis Using Text-Based AI Methods, a Systematic Review. Martin, are you here? Yes, hi, Florencia. How are you? Can you share your screen? I'm going yes. to allow you. I think you can. No. Now. Can you yes. see it? Well. Thank you so much, and you, you can start. Perfect. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin Di Felice, and together with Drs. Parak Chatterjee and Maria Florencia Pocho Cataño, we have written this article, 
which performs a systematic review on depression diagnosis using text-based AI methods. The agenda for this presentation is the following. First, we start with a brief, brief introduction on this subject, the different topics that it includes, and the presentation of the procedure used to perform the review. Then we continue discussing the goals of this study, the results, and close sharing the conclusions obtained from the research. Well, artificial intelligence or AI is one of the branches of the computer sciences that is in charge of solving well, complex nonlinear problems that usually need human interaction. Uh, the increase in computational in comput computational power and the even more often availability of data have converted this field into one of the most prom promising fields, especially in the health and mental health areas. On the other hand, depression is one of the most prevalent mental uh, health affection. It's a mental disease that is characterized by producing mood disorders over long periods of time. That can be uh, several weeks uh, or even more. The studies specified in this paper indicate that it can affect up to 50% of the population at some point in their lives. Given the importance of these two combined topics, we decided to perform well, this systematic review to see what is the state of the art on this matter. It is worth uh, to clarify that AI applied to the person diagnosis involves different kinds of approaches. Some researchers use multimedia data, images as MRI or EG scans, or AU data cited for speeches, or even videos, uh, while others uh, focus more on text data, posts from social networks, or alphanumeric data as clinical records. We say to narrow our research to text based algorithms, and the reason for that is that text data is much more simpler and cheaper to extract. Uh, well, we performed a method known as systematic mapping, a mapping study following the practice posed by Kay Peterson. This is a very structured approach that allows performing an investigation in cer certain matter. To summarize this process, well, it starts with the definition of research questions whose objective is to respond to the goal of the investigation. This is a, then it is defined a set of inclusion and exclusion criteria that will guide the search of different articles on the most popular academic libraries. And finally, well, after each of these questions are uh, answered for each one of these articles, uh, an analysis is performed um, to conclude how is the current situation on the investigated topic. Well, the goal of this study, the study itself, is to identify which research lines are open on the usage of AI techniques for the patient diagnosis. So eventually develop a new method that allows effectively diagnosing it uh, to help the, the disease, a new, a new kind of method. Uh, we have defined the, these five question, research questions uh, that we think will help us to, to define that objective. The first one is which AI methods are used to solve the problem. Uh, basically, uh, well, which algorithm uh, are being used. Uh, the second uh, one is which kind of learning is used to uh, adjust the solution if, you, if they are using algorithms that use uh, supervised uh, learning or are supervised or maybe some kind of hybrid model. Uh, the second question, uh, the third, sorry, the third question is which resources are obtained by each, by each algorithm, which this question is divided maybe in two parts. The first one is which kind of metrics are being used. And well, the second is the, the number itself obtained. Uh, the fourth question is how the results validated uh, by each method and my, I, this has, doesn't uh, refer by uh, how the, the solution is validated, but how the data obtained to generate that solution uh, is, is validated. Uh, and finally, uh, what are the future open research lines for each article? 
Well, uh, as uh, I stated in the previous slides, uh, we have performed an SMS uh, process that uh, basically we define a, an inclusion criteria, which is uh, a uh, in, uh, in this case, we have chosen to, to filter by magazine articles, conference articles, or book chapters. Uh, these studies should be uh, to, from two, since 2012 or newer, uh, the studies must use AI to solve the problem and they should uh, diagnose the question. And after performing that research, we have obtained 192 articles uh, in in the main libraries. We have used the IEEE uh, e and Escobus and PubMed, those three libraries. And after the, that first search, we have applied the exclusion criteria, which is basically we have removed all articles that uh, were not written in English, articles that use uh, uh, image or multimedia data, data. Our studies focus on text data. and. Uh, studies that perform predictions or prognosis, we only are interested in diagnosis or uh, uh, yes. Well, uh, we use that uh, a tool to, 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 uh, to gather all, all the results and the final uh, set of studies were 45. And well, then we started to answer the questions for each one. Of these articles. The first one is which AI method is used to solve the problem. And we have discovered here that more than 75% of the studies are using neural networks or natural language processing algorithms, or maybe a mix of those two. Uh, maybe, uh, well, it makes sense because uh, most of the articles uh, work with social network data and well uh, at least the the natural language processing algorithms make sense uh, so that data can be processed and then classified the second question is the the kind of algorithm uh, the kind of learning sorry uh, used as chat solution and and yes in this case more than 90 percent of the articles use uh, supervised learning. The third question is, uh, was uh, the, the results obtained by each study and the metrics used by them? Uh, we have found that the, the, well, the most used metrics are the one related to supervised techniques like accuracy or precision or recall or even F1. And the number varies between uh, 0.75 and 0.9, uh, giving us an idea of how well these algorithms perform. Uh, the fourth question is the validation used by each method. And we found that most of the studies use the analysis of experts to determine if uh, a record in their data set belongs to a depression diagnosis patient or not. Uh, then some studies use questionnaires. Uh, there are a lot of standard questionnaires like PHU, PHU9. Um, and others use uh, keywords, uh, sentiment analysis on even their data sets where the, each patient or each user themselves uh, describe them as, as depressed or not. And finally, the the last question was, what are the future of research lines? And this is maybe the question where we observe the most iteration responses. We try to, to categorize uh, the the responses, but still we, 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 we see a lot of different answers. But the most seen one is the, the need for more, more data. Uh, we mentioned at the beginning that AI was growing because even each day more data is being available, but in this field, uh, it is still not enough. So to close the presentation, the conclusion are uh, that uh, 
we we see a lot of uh, NLP and uh, neural networks uh, applications in all the studies. The preference on supervised learning data uh, algorithms, the lack the lack of data, uh, and well, uh, basically those were the three the three conclusions. And uh, we see as a future uh, open line or open uh, future work the possibility of uh, using unsupervised algorithms maybe not for for the prediction uh, itself which is per se a, 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 a category, categorization or a classification task and that's why we see a lot of supervised learning algorithms but maybe for previous steps in in a, in a, in a, in a solution we we could use a, a, a not supervised or a, a hybrid model. Well, I don't want to to finish uh, the the presentation without thanking the Klausinia group for supporting the development of this, of this work. Thank you, everyone. Do you have any questions? Well, thank you so much, Martin, for your presentation. Now we are going to. Uh, start share your screen. Thank you so much. And now we start with uh, the questions. Now I'm going to. Uh, so, Martin, thank you for your presentation. It was very clear and interesting. Um, I do have a question. Uh, your results show a prevalence of supervised learning when solving this problem, but you also show that there were some methods that use unsupervised er learning. Could you please elaborate on how those models address this particular problem of diagnosing depression? What does the model learn or how it produces results that, that solve this problem? Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, well, in general, uh, since this is a, a, a classification problem, uh, those models, um, as I mentioned, as one of the, the future lines, those models use su unsupervised uh, learning techniques as previous steps, maybe to, to, to generate a, a categories and from those categories, then apply some supervised technique and uh, and um, well, uh, reach to the conclusion of the if the user has depression or not. But um, as I said, well, they were only three uh, articles from the from the from the the whole review. So uh, it's something that can be exploited in the in the future. Thank you so much. Has anybody any question? In the chat, I have one question. Yes. Don't be scared. Yeah. Well, uh, Martin, uh, you present, you start your study. Recording uh, stopped. Uh, identifying what uh, AI techniques. Uh, do you find other techniques to solve this problem or is out of your scope? Uh, well, we no, we, we focus on AI algorithms. Uh, there is a huge variety. Uh, neural networks support vector machines, uh, decision trees, uh, uh, logistic regression. But uh, we we narrowed that uh, our search to only artificial, even expert systems. Uh, we have seen that, but only only artificial intelligence. Uh, methods. Well, thank you so much for your answer. Thank you so much for your presentation. And now we are going with the third paper called Satellite Orbit Prediction Using Machine Learning Approach. But I don't know, is any author? No, and we have no video. That's why we go with the fourth paper called Maximizing Student Retention Using Supervised Model Informed 
by student counseling data. Ixen, are you here? Hello, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we listen to you. You can share your screen, Ixen. Okay. So I'm afraid I don't have a, a presentation for this one. Um, so I wasn't expecting to, um, to present it today, but um, it, it's, it's um, basically um, some work from a former master's student um, that we had here at, at um, Jorge University where, where I work. Um, so the, the student is called um, John Anderson Rodriguez, and he, he actually also um, works for Los Andes University. So the, the data set that we use for this work uh, is actually a data set, a relationship management database. So um, the, the title of the paper, most informed. So um, I, I, I mean, the, the issue with the student dropouts is quite a serious problem. Uh, in C, there was another paper on this topic earlier on in the session. Um, so and what are the works that we explored? Um, there's a student counseling data to try and predict uh, the students who are going to um, abandon their studies. So, so we did, um, yeah, in the related work session, we actually have a table where we look at some of the works. There is quite a lot of work in this area. It, it, it is definitely an issue um, for many universities. I mean, from bank ones to a degree of financial independence, there's theory data. Um, so it's all kinds of information and also um, all kinds of models. Um, several supervised machine learning models, decision trees, random forest support vector machines, neural networks. Um, so this work uses um, specifically data about student attendance to, to counseling sessions. So the counseling sessions are basically when a student has a has a problem, it might be a personal or an academic problem. Um, they have these counseling sessions where they can go and and get some advice, get some help, right? So the um, data available that we had, the, the, the fields available for each record, so it's, it's, we had 77,000 records. They span, a, they span six semesters from 2018 to 2020. Uh, and basically about each um, visit, each student that visits um, um, the student counseling section will have information about the faculty, the semester in which the student is studying, um, the academic status, so whether the student is normal or deemed to be um, already at risk of dropping out. Um, SPADES, which is which is um, based on on a model um, devised by the Ministry of Education in Colombia, where they basically, um, when they leave school, they take into account when they leave secondary school, they take into account several uh, variables to to predict the risk the student is at that point. Um, uh, funding and, and counselling information. So that's information that we have. Um, in, in well, we, we we show some graphs with data, uh, basically about the, the number of, um, of of visits to to student counseling sessions, depending on student status. Okay, so, so, so we have some students who are um, who, who are basically well, have been suspended, for example, um, 
this is the, the distribution of 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 their visits and um and, and john also looked at uh, well basically the number of credits enrolled versus the number of, of counseling visits so we find that around this area between um 17 and 20 credits um has the highest number of of, of student counseling visits but to be honest it's probably probably also, the number of credits the most students enroll anyway. Um, and also, uh, we look at uh, information such as the number of of, of subjects that the student has um, with, withdrawn. So, um, and also, also we have visits of counselling sessions by faculty. Seems like education and social sciences students have the highest number of of visits to counseling sessions. Um, so basically, um, s s several different techniques are are attempted to to model this data, and and a couple of approaches. So so, so we use one approach where the whole history is used so all six semesters and, and another approach where only two of the, the last two semesters of student data is used and and John tried several models so he tried trees random forest and XG boost um, to see what was best at predicting students that would drop out. And um, he went with XG Boost, uh, that he finds um, that, uh, and um, that he finds is that really um, there's not much difference in moral performance or only the last two semesters. So bearing that in mind, it, um, it's, we're probably better off just using the last two semesters worth of data um, because there's less, well, less training required. So that's um, basically the, the conclusion of this paper. Um, I hope I've, I've tried to be as clear as possible. Um, does anyone have any questions? Well, thank you so much, Ixen, for your presentation. You can stop share your screen. And now uh, we can start with the questions. Has anybody any question? No? I have, Ixen, one question. Uh, do you consider the COVID uh, instead of the analysis of the data? the situation, the, the, specia, the special situation, the students, because you take data from 2018 to 2020, but 2020, March or December? It's, um, so, so, so it's going to be 2020, um, let's see, it's going to be until the middle of the year, but it's, it's basically a semester in, the semesters in Colombia, they go from, from January to June, and then from from August to, to November. So, so if I'm not mistaken, it goes until June 2020. So, so, so really, we don't really touch yeah the time frame when COVID started, right? So that was um 2021. Thank you so much. Maybe the, the, the result, if you study with the data about 2021 or 2022, this year may be different results, no? Yes, I think, I think definitely well, it, it would be interesting to, to, to run the models with a more recent data. 
Thank you so much, Ixen, for your answer. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. Covering the, the COVID pandemic. And now I think you are going to, to speak again <laughs> because we are going to present the, the last paper, Shareholder Structure of Major Technology Companies, a Graph Analytics Study During COVID-19 and Beyond. Thank you so much, Ixent. We listen to you again. Okay, so um, so basically, that so this paper is um, authored by Julio Esquivel, also a master student at Jorge Tayo Luzano University. Um, uh, myself and Oscar Granados, who is the head of the economics and finance department. Um, so basically, for, for this study, we explored how. Um, shareholder or sh shareholdings uh, changed for 20 technology companies and 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 this this paper does actually start with with with, with COVID-19 and it, it goes into an into this year so we could say post-pandemic stage and um or it's happened afterwards, things such as that. So we, we took a sample of this, um, which you can see um, on this table in the paper. Um, basically, what we did here was uh, model the data using a graph so that this all shareholding data for, for for the quarters um from january 2020 to um to 2022 um, from risk Refinitive, which is basically the the platform used by investors uh with financial um uh, data prices and and shareholdings for each company. And we we modeled it into a graph using Neo4j. So we actually uh, the graph to model um, over here of, of the potential is investors, which are represented by a node who invest in, in companies. And our information uh, um, about the country that a company is domiciled in, the cities, uh, both the investors are located in, and the, and, and, and the cities um, which are in which country. Um, these are all the US, by the way. The, the country is always the US here for the for the domicile of a company, but not necessarily for, for the for the. The investor is located in because we find that there are investors um, located all over the world uh, for for these technology companies. Um, we also keep well information about about the type and the subtype. So, so, so that's kind of what kind of technology company um, it is. had uploaded uh, all the data to Neo4j using this data model. Uh, we can just find out some general over here we're seeing nodes per label. So for example, we know that there are 20 companies uh, and we have a considerable number of in, um, investors, almost 10 to the four. Um, and also here we have some information about the number of relationships we have between the nodes in the graph. So the most prevalent relationship is invests in. Okay. Um, 
We can also create some visualizations of, of investors and and the company and and city. So over here, uh, we're seeing a visualization for for Meta, um, which I think is yeah, it, it's it's the little blue circle. I'll try and zoom in a bit. Okay. It's, it's basically the blue circle that we have over here in in the middle. And the, the, the green ones are the investors, the green circles investors, and the red ones that are the cities. Have I got this the right way around? Uh, no, sorry, the green ones are the cities, but because that green circle represents New York and, and the red circles are all the investors which are associated um, and trans associated with with New York. Okay. So um, over here we can see a cluster of investors around several cities, well, namely New York, London, Boston, Chicago, some in, in, in Toronto as well. Um, so we use the near 4J graph data science library to try and get um, graph metrics out of this recent centrality. So we look the invested recent reality to find um, the most important um, investors. And we find that some investors, for example, the, the Vanguard Group, um, invest in all 20 companies in this study. Um, and other investors, uh, well, in, in this case, Ellison only invests in, in one of the companies. Um, in, in in this study, so, so by taking the the, the unweighted investor recent triality, we can see um, how many companies each each investor invests in. Um, we also take the weighted recent triality of investors, which takes in, into account um, the amount in dollars that each. Each investor uh, invests in across um, all the companies. Uh, the and, and we look at each quarter. So, so, so we look at how this varies across several of the quarters in the study, starting from Q1 2020 to Q2 2022. And and in this case, we still see that the Vanguard Group is the the investor which is investing. The most in, in, in dollars. Uh, over, overall, um, something interesting that we noticed uh, was that during the COVID pandemic, uh, generally speaking, the amount invested decreased. And then afterwards, um, in what I'm, what I'm calling the post-pandemic stage, um, it, it increased again. And that seemed to, to happen um, with quite a few of the investors. Uh, we also look at the, the company's recent triality. So we look at, at the, the companies that have the most in investors and by far the company with the highest number of investors um, was Apple. So actually, sorry, uh, we, we, we take two, two different kinds of recent triality here. The, the, the unweighted which basically says how many, how many, um, and the weighted one, which is some community analysis. Um, so. So here we 
nice uh, house time for app. Also, for, so the thing that we find is that uh, the investors for Oracle tend to be much more geographically diverse than the ones for Apple. So, um, so yeah, that, that's basically it. I, I, I think there's some, maybe I should summarize the main conclusions that we have. So I think first conclusion, which is worth highlighting, is that, that most investors reduced the amount they invested during the COVID pandemic, and then they, they seem to bounce back um, in 2022. Uh, the, the invest with the highest, well, for the highest influence, we could say, is uh, what Apple has realization. Um, we found that Microsoft is the company with the highest number of investors. And we also found about the geographical diversity that Apple and Microsoft tend to, to have the main focus of investors from London, New York, whereas with Oracle, there's a much um, broader diversity of geographical locations. Okay, thank you very much. That's it. Thank you so much, Ixem. It's uh, an interesting uh, work. You did it. Uh, I, I have one question, then, then I'm going to ask if anybody wants to ask something, but I want to know if uh, this is a part of a thesis or it's a work uh, of your research group. This is a yeah. This is a master's. This is a master's thesis, basically. Uh, Julio was well. He's 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 already graduated, um, but, but he was he was doing the masters in data engineering and analytics. It's a very interesting uh, work, and I think you you have a lot of conclusions that are so interesting. Very very interesting work. Has anybody any question? Anybody here wants to ask something? I have the last question, if, if I have. Um, what, what are the futures line about this work? What are you going to continue with this? Well, I think it would be interesting to try several things. I mean, we, we could certainly try this with, with, with different sectors. Um, I mean, I, I think it'd be very interesting to, to try this, for example, with uh, well, extractive industries, for example, um, to see how investment has changed um, in, in recent times. Um, I also think that we could have done more uh, more graph analytics, um, really. So, 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 so we could definitely um, do more of that um, in future work. Yes, but your 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 graphs are are beautiful, and you have a lot of conclusions, a lot of information. It's it's so interesting. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ixen. You can stop uh, share your screen, and I ask. Okay, again, thank you, Flo. Thank you, Ixen. And is anybody of the satellite orbit prediction using machine learning approach? Hiridal Haldala, Gornina Ramrata Medinti, or uh, Er Deli Babu? Anybody here? No. I think anybody here. Well, with this work, we finish our session. Uh, then we are going to continue at uh, 16, at, yes, at 4 p.m. with another session. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here, and we we'll see you in, in just a little. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ixan. See you. Bye bye. Nice to nice to listen to you. Thank you, bye, sir.